history of the site and to the area. I suppose if we start off with the basics, uh, today archaeologists, they refer to these types of monuments as passage tombs, which is a descriptive term. We have a human built mound of stone and soil. It covers a small passage. At the end of the passage, a chamber where they found human remains. So that's where the term passage tomb comes from. Now we find passage tombs like Newgrange in other parts of Ireland and also down the western coast of Europe as well. Uh, just north of Scotland, the Orkney Islands and Wales, Spain, Portugal and France. Now they're often found in groups. So this area here, Brunabonia, has around 40 of these passage graves. So we shouldn't look at Newgrange as just one site on its own. It's actually just a small part of a much larger archaeological complex that is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now we have many different types of monuments here uh, in Brunabonia, but the largest and probably the oldest visible remains of human activity in this area are these passage graves. Now we have 40 passage graves. Newgrange is one of three large mounds and then there are 37 smaller ones. So the other two large mounds are called Nouth and Douth. Nouth is the largest, it's behind Newgrange, about a kilometre away, and the mound at Nouth is almost twice the size of the mound at Newgrange. The other large passage grave, Douth, is slightly bigger than Newgrange, it's about two kilometres behind me over in this direction. And we have 37 smaller ones, and you can see a couple of those. There's one on the field just below you there, a little grassy bump. hidden behind the tall tree. You might see it better when you're going back on the shuttle bus. But it gives you an idea of how these monuments can vary in size. Now, generally, passage graves are built and used during the Neolithic period, which is the last part of the Stone Age. Now, in Ireland, the Neolithic period begins around about 6,000 years ago or so. So it's around this time a group of people came to this area and they settled here permanently. During the Neolithic period, farming techniques were first introduced to this country from Eastern Europe. So the people who built all of these monuments were Ireland's first farmers. So they had to establish themselves here in this area, acquire the workforce, learn and develop all of the various skills before they started to build these types of sites. Now, according to the archaeologists, they didn't build the 40 passage graves at the same time but they were developed over a period of about 300 years. So they built many of the smaller ones first before they built the larger ones. Now we do have a radiocarbon date for Newgrange. It was built around 3200 BC. So just over 5,000 years ago, this particular site was built on this hill. Now we still know very little about these people. This is an awful long time ago. There are no documents, there's no writings from the Neolithic period. So we have to go by what they've left behind for us to discover through excavation and archaeology and we have to try and interpret that and it's quite difficult depending on who you talk to you will get different ideas different opinions on many aspects of this ancient culture and what they might have been like now having said that the experts can calculate from human remains that the average life expectancy for a neolithic person was in the region of 30 years of age they suggest to build something as large as newgrange it may have taken an awful lot longer than 30 years now the reason that they're presuming this, it's really down to the material used at these sites and where these people had to go to collect it. So at Newgrange alone, for example, we have approximately a quarter of a million ton of stone. And all of this stone had to be sourced from different parts of the country and then brought back here to the site. A huge undertaking for this project, not just to build one site, but to build 40 of them in this area. And just to give you an idea of how far they had to go to collect some of these stones, well, first of all, we have the large mound. Now afterwards you will have a chance to, to walk around. The mound is roughly circular, it covers about half a hectare of land and it's mostly small stone, about the size of your fist but all packed together. So there's around 200,000 tonne of small stones making up the mound fill and those smaller stones were taken from the Bourne River, that's the most local stone used here. Now there's also these larger stones, there's 97 of them outside, about 450 more inside. The type of stone is called grey black. of Newgrange is quartz from the Wicklow Mountains, which are about 70 kilometres south of us, and there are smaller egg-shaped bones in the quartz wall, which is granite from Dundalk Bay. Dundalk Bay is around 40 kilometres north of us here. Now, to bring the stones back, it's being suggested that they use the river and the sea. 
would be a lot easier to use the sea and river to bring the stones back to this site. But certainly it would have been a huge undertaking just gathering these stones, never mind actually building the site once you have all the material here. And this is why the experts suggest more than one generation involved in the building of each of these three large mounds, Newgrange, Nouth and Death. So obviously they were very important projects for these people if they were quite willing to give their entire lives even just to build a small part of these sites. 